Hey, pastime viewers. Um, the past 48 hours have been very interesting for me. To see the least, um, this morning I gave some of my testimony. Some of you may, have, may or may not have watched that. Um, but it is on my heart tonight, and it has been for the past day or so, um, with the elections coming up, with seeing, uh, a pastor of a rather well-known Christian um, band uh, openly deny <laughs> the necessity of a relationship with Christ to be a Christian, which is not true. Um, as well as seeing just an article on Facebook about, again, uh, Christians losing their lives in the Middle East. Um, I, although I do see, uh, the concept and the health in dealing with our own problems before we help others concept. I have been very much reminded of Psalm 137, 5 through 6, the past like day or two here. It's just been, you know, constantly in my mind. Um, and I'm going to read it for you. Um, it says, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Now, King David wrote this, and most, most of us in America have heard the King David, King Solomon, Adam and Eve, all the big name characters in the Bible. Um, or the bigger name characters, but just to stop and consider for a second, King David, mm, a majority of his life was on the run from his father-in-law. He went over to the Philistine side and then had to fight, you know, he created, you know, friendships there and, you know, like that, you know, he was trusted by people there. And then, you know, he was anointed king, um, but he wasn't crowned king yet. And so when he was crowned king, then he had to fight for Israel's side. Um, so, you know, he, he lived a very rough life. Um, it was not all like, oh, I'm cor coronated or, you know, my coronation, now I'm king and everything's all happy dandy, you know. Um, most of you know the story of Bathsheba, perhaps, but, you know, there's a lot more to his life. And for him to say, like, to consider Jerusalem above his chief joy, that's a profound statement, in my opinion. Um, because, like, as Americans, uh, in general, like, we tend to... Um, there has been a, not all of us um, as Americans, but there's been a noticeable decrease of appreciation um, for the freedoms that we do enjoy. Um, and, it, it, you know, um, I know a lot of, a lot of people uh, vary in their views of the war in the Middle East, um, there's an increase of apathy, there's an increase of desensitization, um, there's a desire for peace, which is good, um, but we don't, as people often consider, you know, <sighs> that peace won't be without Jesus. And so, like, um, it aches my heart. It, it troubles me 
as a person, um, but I do pray, um, for that prayer, you know, I pray that first, um, and, uh, I hope that we, as tempting as it is to say, oh, well, let's, you know, build a border and not concern ourselves with anybody else, um, particularly God's people, um, if we call ourselves Christians, uh, the Jews, the people of Israel, um, we should be considering as Christians this verse, um, Psalm 137, 5 through 6, um, because there's so much temptation to say, you know, well, just ignore them, let them let what happen happens, you know, God is going to protect his people, uh, but, you know, we, as the United States, have an opportunity, it is not often presented as an opportunity, um, to stand with Israel, to, um, because he calls him the apple of his eye, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and they are precious to him. Um, and so that's pretty much what I have to say. Um, but that's been really very much on my mind and very much on my heart. So I just wanted to share that.